Hello everyone and welcome to this STEM outreach presentation on behalf of Canterbury Christchurch University. My name's Rob and along with my co-presenters Kai and Nathan, we'd like to thank you for taking part. Whether you're watching from a classroom or the comfort of your own home, we hope you're able to take something away from today to think about and perhaps you'll be responsible for the next big breakthrough. So, what's this all about? As you can see from the title, we'll be talking to you about oil. It's a hot topic at the moment, it has been for years and unfortunately it likely will be for quite some years to come. You may already know about oil and its uses, but we're going to take a little look at what happens when things go disastrously wrong before this natural resource can be used. First, we need to explain the importance of oil. Crude oil can be used to create many useful products that are used in many different industries as shown. However, these resources are very harmful to the environment and over the years, accidents have occurred that have led to millions of gallons of oil being spilled into the ocean. Now we're going to start off straight away with an activity, get those brain cells firing and get a real feel for exactly what we're dealing with. Now you're going to need a baking dish or suitable container, some vegetable oil, hot chocolate powder, jug of water, cotton wool balls, and since these spills usually do happen out of sea, something to represent wildlife. So here we can see we've opted for a little fish and some feathers to represent birds. An optional extra is to use sand or something to represent the shoreline, just so you can really create your own environment. No, there's been an oil spill. Quickly, you have five to ten minutes to use your spoons, paper towels, and cotton balls to remove the oil before it does any more damage. What a mess, that poor wildlife. Now we've only given you cotton wool balls to try and clean as much oil as you possibly can and to try and save as much wildlife as you can. Have a little think, is there anything else around that you could use to clean up? And do you really think you could get every trace of oil out of your environment? Well done. Now take a minute to look at how much oil you managed to remove. How difficult did you find it? What were your methods of removing the oil? What materials did you use? How much those materials would have cost? And what happens to the oil that's been cleaned up? Now that you have taken a moment to think about these questions, let's have a think of the bigger picture. In 2021 alone, more than 10,000 tons of crude oil was spilled into the ocean after a tanker had a malfunction. That is the same weight as 2,000 elephants. Some estimates say that the cost to clean up a medium or a large sized oil spill could reach 9.4 billion roughly. Entire ecosystems can be decimated by spills, including birds, fish, crustaceans, and coral. 
Now let's look at an example of a real-world problem, the disaster that occurred on the Deepwater Horizon. On the 20th of April in 2010, the oil rig Deepwater Horizon experienced a catastrophic failure which resulted in the tragic death of 11 workers and an estimate 200 million US gallons of crude oil being spilled into the ocean. Now using what you learned in the demonstration, think about how monumental of a task cleaning up over 200 million gallons over the vast and open ocean is. This oil spill that took place on the deep water horizon and oil spills after had a detrimental impact on the local, local marine life. Millions of various sea creatures, including many seabirds, such as the brown pelican, died during the spill. This oil spill even pushed some species, such as the bluefin tuna, to near extinction. In addition to the impact on local fauna, the local flora along the seabed suffered catastrophic damage, which still affects the local environment to this day, and then which in infecting the ecosystem. According to official documents, 1,146 turtles died as a result of the oil spill. However, scientists now believe that over 5,000 turtles were likely to have been harmed as a direct result of the Deepwater Horizon disaster. The Gulf of Mexico is home to five species of turtle, green, Kemp's Ridley, leatherback, hawksbill, and loggerhead turtles that were all affected by this oil spill. Another group of creatures that were harmed as a result of the oil spill were mammals. Higher estimates long after the deep water horizon suggest that as many as 25,900 marine mammals have been harmed because of the spill. These include bottlenose dolphins, spinner dolphins, melon-headed whales, and sperm whales. Now, how do we clean up these oil spills? Using similar methods to what you used, engineers had developed and expanded on these simple ideas to create ingenious machines that can clean up such massive and disastrous spills in increasingly shorter times. For example, to remove oil from local harbours, special water jets are used to push the oil back out to sea where it can then be collected and disposed of appropriately. This method is known as shoreline flushing and works best on rocks and concrete structures, but it may pose a challenge on pebble and shingle beaches as the oil seeps through, making the removal difficult. Shorelines with a lot of vegetation usually survive a single oil coating and can clean themselves up. It's usually best to let the vegetation deal with the contamination naturally without human interference in this instance. In order to prevent oil from spreading after a disaster occurs, booms are placed in the water. Not as exciting as the name suggests, as they do not involve explosions. Booms are physical barriers placed on the surface of the water and are moored in place to prevent oil from spreading to sensitive areas, such as delicate marshland or areas with a lot of flora and fauna. The application of booms is crucial during the first stages of an oil spill, therefore fast deployment is essential. Another method of collecting oil from the surface of the water after an oil spill is through the use of specially made industrial vacuums. Large industrial strength vacuums can be used to suck oil off the shoreline and off the water's surface. A device developed by the Norwegian University of Science and Technology blows bark or other absorbent materials into the oil before sucking it up, allowing a greater volume of oil to be removed in a shorter time frame. Sorbents are absorbent materials, usually made into rolls or sheets that absorb the oil. A good sorbent is aphilic and hydrophobic, which means they absorb much more oil than water. 
This means that they can be laid on the water surface and can absorb oil without becoming saturated with water. For example, a new type of solvent being developed uses human hair. A key factor to remember when using this method is that it creates a lot of waste material and increases the risk of the oil being dropped outside of a contaminated area. Due to this, solvents are often reserved for mopping up the last remnants of oil after other cleaning methods have been used and for wiping down the cleaning equipment itself. In situations where the water and oil has become too mixed to allow easy cleanup, special chemicals can be used to separate the oil and water. Requiring special permissions, cleaning chemicals that act like detergents can be added to the oil to help separate it from the water and shoreline, making it easier to clean up. Nutrients can also be added to assist micro microbes in the breaking down of the oil. However, questions have been raised over if it's worth using these chemicals, as they can be just as harmful as the oil they're helping clean up. Sometimes, when there is too much oil in one place, it is easier to simply burn the oil in its place. Oil burning utilises a fire boom towed by two ships to create a U-shape which catches the oil. The oil is then ignited during the burning process. About 90-95% to of the oil is burnt away. The residue that is left over can be simply mopped up using the other methods mentioned earlier. Burning of oil is thought to be one of the most effective methods for clearing in bulk. However, the conditions must be right in order to control the burn. Unfortunately, a lot of air pollution and carbon emissions are released during the burning process, so great care has to be taken, such as monitoring the wind direction and deciding if the nearby area is suitable for this process. Now you must be thinking, how do they come up with these methods for containing and cleaning these oil spills? There are many different methods for creating engineering solutions. However, the most known method is CDIO, which stands for Conceive, Develop, Implement and Operate. Tasks like how to clean up oil spills all start with small conceptualization, small ideas and tests, like using cotton balls to absorb oil from a bowl of water. That's right. By doing this activity, you've already started the first stage of the CDIO process. Now, do you have any ideas to develop and then implement and operate? Now let's take a moment to reflect. What are the pros and cons of the current methods of oil cleanup? How do you think we can improve on these methods? How do you think we can limit the effect on the natural environment when these spills happen? Should we be using oil at all, as they are an ever-present danger to the natural world and newer methods are being pioneered to contain and clean these disasters? If you want to make a difference and help these efforts, consider doing engineering. Hope you've enjoyed taking part in this presentation. More importantly, we hope we've given you something to think about. Do you think it's time for change? Do you think it is? The United Nations agrees. In 2015, the UN devised its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The issue of oil spills links to no poverty, zero hunger and decent work and economic growth and that oil spills can cause massive no-fish zones which, in the case of small communities that fish for sustenance, can mean the loss of their only food source. And for larger commercial fisheries, a huge loss of economy. It links to clean water and sanitation, as there is a risk of water source contamination. Good health and well-being is affected not only by the oil itself, but some of the chemicals used in cleanup efforts have been linked to health issues later on. Quality education, climate action, sustainable cities and communities, industry, innovation and infrastructure, affordable and clean energy and responsible consumption and production are affected as without improved safety measures, these disasters would be much more frequent and the possibility of not using oil at all would mitigate this issue completely and ultimately help the planet. Finally, life below water and life on land are key areas affected by oil spills as, like we saw earlier, they suffer a heavy toll as a result. Please, take some time to look at these goals.
many linked to one another, and as an engineer of the future, you could be responsible for large scale change for a better world. Thank you.